Hi, how's it? Okay, so we're in the next part now. I was speaking about Freud's ID ego and super ego and how does that it ties in and how witchcraft can uh, be explained using it and we're just going to carry on from there. Okay, um, yeah, no. Uh, the super ego is insufficient to, not super ego, sorry, but the super ego, uh, the, 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 the ID and the ego in and of themselves are not enough to regulate general human, um, like a collective morality that keeps society in a neat little bunch where it is that people are not running amok, rampant, just killing each other at a whim because they're upset, they're angry or whatever. The law says, however, that's why I'm saying the, the, the theory of the psyche, this is where it falls short. I'm taking the baby, I'm throwing out the bathwater. So this is me um, throwing out the bathwater. God says in the scriptures, if you so much as are angry at a person, you commit murder with your heart. If you look upon a man with lust, you commit adultery with your heart. Therefore, the Lord absolutely disregards the superego, Ega Freud, and says, I am the superego equivalent. I like to call it superego squared, where you consider the eye of God, where you consider what God sees. In the days of Noah, it is written of the population and then time as having thoughts and intentions that were evil continually. As a result, the Lord destroyed the world with a flood because of the thoughts and intentions of mankind that were evil continually and their general other wickednesses, the mixing of the seed of demons, or sorry, of fallen angels and man, etc. Uh, do you understand? So if God could like destroy an entire earth and start again from scratch, okay, uh, because of thoughts and intentions, then you must understand that on that day Freud's superego falls short to regulate humanity truly because in the absence of people looking at you uh, and so therefore being given anonymity human beings can do whatever they want to do they will do just enough to keep their ego in a bunch but not enough to keep society pleased and so those who do deeds of darkness do them as it is written in God's word in the dark so when you commit murder you tend to do it when nobody else is looking and then you grab that body and you put it in some uh, like felt some like open air field and you dig a shallow grave and you hide it there hope nobody finds it and then you go to work the next day you're officially a murderer now but nobody knows and so you're able to keep your alleged cool walking around an environment while you're being a murderer so the super ego failed there because guess who is not omniscient human beings therefore when human beings are not looking at you then you can do whatever under heaven you want to do so the super ego uh, fails then to protect humanity from heinous acts that are committed in darkness when nobody else is looking when nobody else is looking and witchcraft awards people the status of Ted Bundy it awards people the status of Moses Sitole it makes out of you a serial killer a serial rapist a serial murderer it makes out of you a serial thief it converts you into Ibandidi when you look or down or you frown upon looting you know whenever like uh, some kind of calamity strikes a society and so there's a little bit of anarchy and you walk into the grocery store and like fill up your trolley with um groceries like what happened in KZN some two years ago yeah on that day the super ego has been fried fried like an egg in a pan and people have lost their like you know rockers they've lost lost their minds and so they just go on and steal right there in broad daylight so they're in line society failing to regulate other members of society decorum is only maintained insofar as there is some kind of um a peace and order and tranquility but as soon as things go out of whack any kind of um like vortex that is twisting in an environment causing instability will make ma mankind do the worst of things uh witchcraft is dangerous because it is this cantankerous re cataclysmic environment full of looting but that is spiritual it is veiled from the naked eye and as a result you don't see walking into dion or macro tv haliboni the activity of stealing these hot cross buns you don't see the anarchy in the kingdom of darkness you don't see the amount of looting of people's things in the kingdom of darkness and because of the anonymity there is no end to what then human beings can do when they are granted that veil of anonymity and that for me validates and justifies the doctrine of total depravity there is no end to what we can do as human beings and evidence of that is in what we do when we imagine nobody sees we are only held together by sticky tape the sticky tape of man's eyes 
But insofar as you are kind of atheistic or like irresponsibly believing in a God that just does not intervene in the matters of man and is not careful for your sin sufficiently enough to judge or punish it, insofar as you have that kind of mindset, there is no end as to what you can steal as soon as you find out about witchcraft and its ability to indeed take uh, things from people. So people who dabble with sorcery, I'm still going to explain the law of diminishing marginal returns to you guys. People who dabble with witchcraft, they are like ones who like learn like surprisingly walk into this room full of riches gold treasure do you understand and it's not theirs but they're in that environment and in a position to take it they are in that environment and in a position to take it and they anticipate that since nobody will see their grubby sticky kleptomaniacal fingers taking a gem away from another person insofar as nobody sees by the amazing grace of god giving me tranquility to communicate this because this is where i get upset okay they then just take and 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 take thinking that there is no ramification management it is why among some of the most abused persecuted christians in the world are the prophetic are those who have seeing gifts those who are able to pierce into the veil of the spirit realm and observe the deeds of the filth Thing. They hate us with eyes that see in this way because we are the eyes that they hoped would never ever again find out that they're actually low-key thieves. They're actually low-key murderers and they're actually low-key destroyers. They hate being busted. But what rather is the hatred that they feel is the hatred of a God that is holy that they hoped would never ever come around to finding out what they're into or that would be okay insofar as they have said his sinner's prayer. A God that's just going to be all right since, you know, you kind of walk around holding a cross or it's dangling on your chest and you've got a Bible under your armpit. A God that insofar as you've got these deeds, I mean, who cares? if in the spirit realm you are a prolific kleptomaniac we're just gonna let you kind of like you know slide your dms into heaven and actually successfully get the number of god the removal of society's eyes makes people then who have dabbled one in the occult kind of crazy it converts them into these power hungry and insatiable like there is no satisfying their thirst and their hunger for acquisition uh, monsters that then try and find anything and anyone from whom to raise themselves up because for them the be all and end all of uh, life to live is is joel osteen's idea Get your best life now they are looking at this earth they are looking at acquiring legacies and destinies in this earth they are building for themselves mountains upon mountains of mansions and acquisitions and legacies on this earth and they think that insofar as they can gain clout and street cred here on this earth they have arrived they don't have an eternal perspective they're foolish and according to god you are gathering for yourself treasure on earth where moth and rust destroys you are like the man storing up barns upon on barns of produce in your little uh whatever like shack there in your on your farm saying ha i have gathered for myself all this and so i will never lack anymore and in retirement i will be a peaceful man with lots but god says you're foolish tomorrow you will die and all this stuff will belong to other people how about you rather gather for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy people most of them the grand majority never quite get around to uh, fixating on that point they don't see us as ones who have got a silver cord tied to these mortal bodies of death that are perishing and that once it gets cut that silver cord we then float into outer space we float into the cosmos we float into another dimension called the eternal plane and in the absence of your silver cord making you buoyant and floating upwards like uh, sorry into heaven i don't eat you having the holy spirit in the absence of the holy spirit making you buoyant and so therefore you float upwards you will plunge downwards you will sink you will go into the abyss into the eternal lake of fire where the worm dieth not after the second death you are going to get destroyed eternally let's move on to the next